Welcome back to www.learnquickbooksfree.com In this next segment I'm going to be covering payables which is basically expenses or any money is going out the company. I'm going to be showing you how to set up vendors and different bank accounts. I'm going to also show you how to enter transactions, enter bills, cut checks and pretty much everything that revolves around payables. The main two areas that you're going to be dealing with for payables is going to be under vendor and some uh, parts of uh, banking. Okay, vendor center is also over here in this little uh, tab over here. So we're going to hit vendor center. And let me go ahead and minimize that so you can see vendor center. And uh, basically, uh, this is going to show a list of all your vendors. This is one way where you can enter your new vendor. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to hit new vendor. And we're going to call it vendor1. Okay. And then we're going to put the company information. So uh, this uh, uh, field, what you see up here, is going to be f uh, mainly for the search. Okay. So uh, company name is going to be called vendor1. First name could be, uh, you know, if it's if they got a first name, you can put it. If they don't, you can leave it blank. So we'll just go ahead and put Tom Harold. Here we go. <clears throat> if there's a Tom Harold's watching out there, you're the lucky winner. Okay, and then this is where we're gonna hit enter and put in the address. Okay, and hit enter again. And we're going to put in the city, state, and zip. So we're going to go ahead and put Los Angeles, California, 90001. And once again, you can put whatever you'd like on this. This is what's going to show on uh, the billing address for the vendor. Uh, and this is what could also come out on the check for the address. Okay. As you see over here, then uh, we go to phone. We can put a phone number. And the more you put, the better because as you're dealing with it, if you want to call or if you want to email it's good to have all this information in here I like to put this kind of stuff in here okay and then you can put the fax number if you want you can put an email address if you want uh, email address is, is, is pretty good to put because then you can go ahead and email things automatically from QuickBooks and then print on check and this is once again uh, something that can be changed depending on how your vendor wants to get paid, you know, if they want to get paid under the company name, their own personal name, uh, whether it's abbreviated or not, so what not. So this is where you can choose how to uh, have the company print out on check. Okay. Then we're going to go to additional information. So under additional info, you can put in your account number. You can switch the terms. You can either choose one of these or you can create a new one. I'm going to show you how to create new ones later. Uh, but basically, 1% 10 net 30 means uh, that you're going to uh, that you're getting a 1% discount if paid within 10 days, but you can pay within 30 days. 2% discount if paid within 10 days or net 30 days. Uh, due on receipt, net 15, net 30. So let's go ahead and just go ahead and pick net 30 for now credit limit you can go ahead and put an amount you don't have to uh, but uh, let's not go ahead and put an amount this is just to show you that you can tax ID uh, that's another thing that you can go ahead and put your vendors tax ID number but um, it's not something that's a must when it's a vendor okay and then we're gonna get hit okay so there you go we've just created our first new vendor as you can see you'll see the company information over here and this is why I like this because as you can see with the email uh, it's available right over here and a lot of different things are available for you right over here let's go ahead and create a second vendor vendor 2 and then we're gonna go ahead and put vendor 2 no personal name 555 Canadian way and this is going to be Montreal, uh, Quebec, whatever their uh, zip code may be. And then you can put Canada as well. 
um, sometimes those little pop-up screens are going to pop up and I just hit cancel. And then a contact could be a gym, whoever that may be. Phone number. Same thing, email address. I'm going to go to additional info. And for them, I'm going to put do on receipt. And then I'm going to hit OK. And there you go. Now I have two vendors in there. This is where you could also use a search feature. And you know, once you get a big list of vendors, you can hit vendor. Or since we have two vendors, we're going to just type in one. And as you can see, it only brought up that one that I have the actual word one in there. Okay. So this is one way of setting up a vendor. I'm going to show you a different way of setting up a vendor. Uh, but before I do, uh, let me tell you about the two ways you can enter your transactions. Okay, so I'm going to close this out for now. And I'm going to go back to vendor. <clears throat> and you could do enter bills as the main option for entering your bills uh, that you get. Okay. Uh, the second option that you could do is actually just go straight to bank write checks and I'm gonna explain the difference in a minute of why you'd use one or the other okay but for now we're gonna go to vendor and we're gonna go to enter bills so under enter vendor uh, under enter bills you'll see the first thing that shows up is bill or credit we're gonna do a bill for right now but if you do get a credit memo this is where you turn it into a credit we're gonna do bill right now now, if we have a third vendor that we have not entered in here, so as you see, I'm going to type in vendor. As you see, there will be a couple of companies that pop up. But let's just say it's not any of these. You can either hit add new, or if I just keep typing in the vendor name, and I hit tab, it's going to be the same thing, and it's going to ask me, do I want a quick add, set up, or cancel? A quick ad, I don't recommend doing that unless it's maybe for uh, under credit card charges, and I'm going to show you that later on. Um, but it's it's not the end of the world, depending on if you got terms you don't or how detailed you want to be. So it's really up to you. But I'm going to just be a little bit detailed right now, and I'm going to copy this. I'm going to bring it over here. I'm going to put in the address. Here we go again. Here we go again. And this is going to be Los Angeles, California 9001. Okay, no email, no nothing else. Terms, I'm going to go over here. I like to put in terms because eventually you're going to have to put that anyways. And let's go ahead and do do on receipt again. And we're going to go ahead and hit OK. As you can see, this filled in. And now we're going to look at the date. Okay, so let's say I got this bill today but the invoice date on it shows 515 so I'm gonna change it to 515 let's say it's a thousand dollars reference number is the invoice number so if it says invoice number 110502 whatever it may be B A C 11 this is why you'd want to enter a bill because under entering bill you can reference um, invoice numbers and a little bit more information than just writing a check okay writing a check also means that you're ready to write a check today whereas enter bills uh, you can choose to pay it when you want to okay as you will see <clears throat> the due on receipt popped up as a default no discount rate and now I'm just going to memo you can put a memo if you'd want to or not it's up to you we're just going to write merchandise it really doesn't matter this is optional and then you hit tab and you get down to account. Now under account is where I told you you're going to now have to figure out what expense or what account to put these under. Okay. If you're buying inventory, that's going to go under cost of goods sold. Okay. So any time you're going to buy something where you're reselling it, that's cost of goods sold. Okay. You can make different types of cost of goods sold and break it down as much as you want. Uh, but that's basically the uh, type of account it would go under cost of goods sold. Uh, if it's something 
uh, that's basically an expense such as a telephone bill or anything that's expensable that would go under expense okay and there are different types of accounts that you could put that un un under as well if you're gonna go ahead and buy a computer well that can go under assets uh, it may uh, it's gonna be most likely under other assets so let's do that right now let's go ahead and pretend that we bought a computer and we're gonna go ahead and hit add new computers you can either ask uh, you can either expense it or uh, take it to asset uh, the reason why you may want to throw it into an asset is because it's going to bring value to the company showing that you actually have some assets whereas when you're expensing it uh, you're basically taking the hit uh, right there and then and uh, the company doesn't show that it's got any value so uh, it, this is something that if you're not too familiar with you can ask your CPA whoever you need to ask but um, we're going to go ahead and do other type of account and we're gonna do other current asset for computers I'm gonna hit continue and I'm gonna type in computers and I'm gonna hit save and close so as you can see now this is under other current asset and usually assets are you know bigger larger ticket items so if you're buying just a hard drive for fifty dollars that's most likely an expense but if you're buying an actual laptop or a computer let's say for a thousand dollars that's easily could be an asset and what your CPA is going to do at the end of the year, uh, they're going to basically go ahead and amortize it uh, and uh, expense a portion of it each year. Okay? So, um, we're going to go ahead. You can put a memo if you want. You don't have to. Uh, customer job, I'm going to show you what that's all about uh, later on. Uh, but, uh, um, you know, I'm not going to go through that right now, but I will show you what customer job uh, would be good for in this case because it's a computer I'm not gonna put it under, under a cu customer job and I'm just gonna go ahead and hit save and new okay let's go put in a couple more uh, bills okay so and that concludes the first part of this lesson uh, visit our website to see the second part of this lesson at www.learnquickbooksfree.com